I think it's the biggest mess the airline industry has ever faced, certainly in Europe. We've had two years now of COVID, travel restrictions, flight bans that we've never had before. And then it's been followed by the tragic and Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, you know, we have never seen disruption like this to air travel. But I remain optimistic. I think one of the things that is emerging out of this is a newfound appreciation for the need for free movement of people across Europe and the need for keeping air travel affordable uh, and maybe postponing some of the more penal environmental measures uh, because co Europe's consumers can't afford them. Why has aviation failed to get the message across that it is doing great things towards it? Maybe not as much for some, but it is making it. Why have you, f you the industry, failed? I, I blame the media. Oh, come on. Because you, you want to show global warming. It's always a picture of an aircraft taking off out of an airport. Uh, shipping accounts for double aviation's EU uh, CO2 emissions in Europe. 5% is against 2%. But nobody's ever going to show a, a ferry chugging out of the port. It's always, there's the aircraft, look at the contrails. And we need to be much more aggressive in explaining to people, we account for about 2% of Europe's CO2 emissions, shipping accounts for about 5%, road transport 26%. Stop blaming aviation. As the tragic events in Ukraine demonstrate, you need aviation uh, and we need to, uh, need to prioritise and encourage the free movement of people across the continent of Europe. The, the difficulty is the demand is huge at the moment. You've brought nearly all your aircraft back. Your percentage of versus 2019 is up there again. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we expect to grow by about 10% this year. We did 150 million passengers pre-COVID. And if there are no more COVID disruptions this year, we think that'll grow to 165 million passengers. But remember, a lot of that growth is us filling in gaps of airlines like Norwegian, who significantly cut the fleet, and Italia reduced the fleet by 50% in Italy. We're taking up slack that's been left by others. I don't think it's overall market growth. And in terms of what you now need from regulators or from authorities i mean you, you continue to bash airports and costs i mean that's that it wouldn't be my it wouldn't be the aviation if you weren't mm. doing that I, mean, I think what we really need from europe is a more coherent response to you know covid or pandemics you know we can't europe has for 40 years operated on free movement of people yet during covid you national governments shutting down uh, access or trying to limit travel if we look at the way you're where you're going to grow right now where is it going to be I mean, it's broadly spread across Europe this year. Italy is a big area of growth. We're putting 25 of the 65 new aircraft into Italy. We're growing strongly in Poland, Slovakia, Romania. Uh, so hang on, just to pause that. So Italy, you're taking on ITA and Italy. Lufthansa effectively now, if that, if that deal goes ahead. You're taking on Joseph in Eastern, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Who? Never heard Wizz of them. Air. Who? Never heard of them. You're moving into Wizz Air territory. <laughs> it's our territory. We're already the biggest airline in Poland. You know, he's not able to compete with Ryanair. But I, I think because the demand is everywhere. We're also growing in Portugal. We've opened a base yesterday in Funchal in Madeira, two aircraft. So there are growth opportunities all over Europe. Uh, and we need to time. We need to kind of, we're fortunate in that we've taken delivery of 65 aircraft from Boeing this winter. We have a lot of new aircraft, very fuel efficient. And we have an opportunity now to return to growth. You, uh, you tried to get more planes from Boeing and you were unsuccessful in the deal. Well, well we, just, with them, we didn't make a deal. You know, we couldn't agree on pricing. Right, but the last time you did a big deal with Boeing, you absolutely took them to the cleaners. Oh, that's not true. I mean, we're paying a lot of money for these aircraft. No, no, I mean, the, the famous deal at the height of the recession, when you actually went in there and wiped the floor with them. No, that's not, that's not true. I mean, you look at Boeing's profitability at the moment. Most of it is being driven by the, uh, the, the, the success of the 737 program, and we're the largest customer of the 737 program. What about Airbus? Would you... We would, as long if the price was right. But, you know, we've never been able to get into a, a serious discussion with Airbus. Airbus don't trust that we will ever order Airbus from them. I keep testing. We say, why don't you give me a 10% discount and see what happens? Um, you know, but Airbus have had a much more successful sales program for the last two or three years. Their order book, they were first out with the NEO. Their order book is much more is much more full than Boeing's. Boeing need, the, need more orders and they keep losing customers to Airbus, which is disappointing. But good for you because... It's, I think it's fundamentally good for us. I mean, we're now Boeing's last remaining large customer in Europe. They lost Jet 2 recently to Airbus and it looks like the IAG, that 200 uh, um, MOU that Willie signed a couple of years ago has now been reopened. It looks like that's going to go back to Airbus. Boeing needs more aircraft here in Europe. Finally, 
What does Ryanair need? I think what Ryanair needs is a reform of European air traffic control. We can't continue to have those delays. We need a much more coherent response to, uh, 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 to COVID or uh, pandemics. And I think we need a much greater appreciation, certainly among European regulators, that the free movement of people is fundamentally dependent on air travel. We're not going to move freely around Europe on bicycles. We're not going to do it on ferries or on trains either. We need aviation, and aviation has been the whipping boy in Europe for the last five years. And I think we need to be much more appreciation that without low fare air travel and the airlines, the free movement of people around Europe will not exist.